Does your vision for business match what you see happening on a daily basis? Welcome to Jim White's Circle of Success Show, where Jim White brings it all together. For over 30 years, Jim White has worked with organizations and individuals worldwide to help develop and implement excellence. You'll get the inside story on how to create innovative leaders from one corner of your company to the other. Get everyone on your team contributing to the bottom line. Keep building revenue, even when the economy and your customers have flatlined, and more. Jim White's Circle of Success show covers it all, from communication to contract negotiation, from personal fulfillment to revving up cash flow. It's not about theories. It's about showing what works and how to make it work for you. And now, here's your host, Jim White. Thank you, David, and good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the show. We have a returning guest, David Drake, with us today. And uh, David is going to, for the full hour, he is going to give us a progress report on crowdfunding, H.R. 264. And he's also going to walk us through step-by-step how to start using this vehicle for raising funds and creating jobs. Like I said, David's going to be here for the full hour. And uh, he's back... uh, within two or three weeks. Remember, he was on the show in January of this year, and it's it's you, so keep those emails coming when you see something that you want us to continue to drill down on. Uh, we'll get the guests back as soon as we can. In this case, uh, we were lucky to be able to get our calendars together and get David Drake back on the show. So, David, uh, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Jim. Thanks for having me again. It's exciting to talk about crowdfunding, the way for the uh, average person to get funding for their project. Glad to be here. Boy, my, my, my pleasure. And like I said, with all the emails we received, uh, they're glad you're back as well. So uh, in, in the course of the hour, uh, when we go off the air at 2 o'clock Pacific today, and uh, people are going to have a roadmap of how to, how to use this tool, if you will. So, um, give us an update. Uh, what's the latest? Uh, it, what is it? HR 264. That's the that's the House version of this. And uh, kind of give us a progress report of where it stands and uh, the Senate and, and, and the Congress side right now. So, we had an event in uh, Manhattan, January 23rd, 24th, and 25th, 33 events. And we had Congressman Patrick McHenry attend the event, who actually was, you know, crowned as the crowdfunding congressman who brought in a couple of bills that in November 2011 had passed the House. Mm-hmm. How you got these bills going into the, to the Senate to be approved? Apparently, the Senate is much more complicated, much more political. Uh, you know, there's more filibuster involved. People can actually block something by just ending up talking about it for 24 hours if they wanted to. And uh, <laughs> so right now, everybody's amazing. convinced their senators. I know. They're trying to convince their senators, come on, push this through. It needs to become legal. But this is the trick. Right. Our funding today it is legal. What they're talking about is not what you can do today. We want the senators to make it legal to sell ownership in a business. But crowdfunding is getting a crowd. You can use ten to hundred dollars or thousand dollars each for your project, and that is happening all over the world legally today, here and everywhere else. What's not legal is that you cannot give up equity or ownership of the company that you want the money for. So crowdfunding itself, I want you and everybody else listening today. It doesn't matter if you're in the U.S. or Mexico or what other local. Mm-hmm. You, are. you can go online, go to Google, and then find the different crowdfunding sources. They're free. Mm-hmm. Start it. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk about that. Mm-hmm. But maybe you wanted me to talk a little about you know the organization behind it. Yeah, what what I'd like to do, uh, you you you've given us uh, a review from the Senate side, and uh, we want to encourage all of uh, all of our viewers worldwide. Keep those letters and emails going to your senators, especially in the United States. So stay behind this initiative uh, to make sure that we see something happen in 2012. So it's very important 
that you do that and, uh, and, 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 and you get enough information, enough emails and letters going to the senator, they're going to listen. So you do have a voice. So that's one. Um, and also, I want to be very clear that our audience understands, David, that it is not legal to sell equity at this point in time. That's really critical. Is that correct? That is correct. In the U.S., you cannot sell equity in crowdfunding. You have to go through a broker-dealer or go through the regulation of the SEC. That's correct. In, in Holland and in England, it is legal. But please, continue, Jim. Okay, so in Holland and England, it's but the United States, uh, if you're going to raise equity, uh, you still have the procedure to, in, in the particular states and the blue, sta uh, blue sky laws and et cetera that you've got to comply with, right? So we want to be very clear ab ab about that. Uh, before we get into the how, uh, let's talk a little bit about with your crystal ball, and you're really good at this, how do you see the Senate thing playing out, one? And then secondly, I'd like for you to share a little bit more about uh, LDJ Capital and the other organizations so people really understand what you're doing and also about this event that you did in New York and the one that's coming up in L.A. So three major topics I just threw out there at one time at you, right? Okay. Um, let me start with uh, my venture capitalist firm is called LDJ Capital. And we invested in an event company called the Soho Law Capital Creation. So that is an events company that you invested in? Correct. We invested okay. in an events company to educate investors institutions and okay. individuals as well on the different ways of getting capital to your business. Mm -hmm. Whether it's late stage or early stage, but for private companies. And crowdfunding obviously from the early stage, but it's you know, the well best known, you know, topic out there. Mm -hmm. So we call it old umbrella of the topics that this Soho Law is talking about. It's called private company marketplace. The subsection of crowdfunding is one aspect of it. And if you want to get even more granular, crowdfunding could have, you know, either debt or, or equity as different components. You know, debt meaning, hey, give me a microfinance loan of $100 for me to buy a bike in India. That is crowdsourcing or crowdfunding, so to say, in that category. The other one is crowdfunding as we hear it day to day, which is give me $100 to buy a bike and you'll get a piece of my company. Now that part is not legal here, but it's legal in a couple other countries outside of the U.S. And that's the main topic. Mm -hmm. Now, we're doing an event in L.A., so we're going to be close to you March 13th and the 14th. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we had decided to invite a lot more entrepreneurs who want to learn about this. So we had reduced the price to 195 because in New York it was close to $700 to 10 mm -hmm. So that will be exciting to open that up to everybody else. Did that cover most of the questions, Jim? Did you yeah, it, 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 it did. And really what I want our audience to understand that uh, this promotion that you're doing and the efforts that you and your firm are putting behind the education is a big deal because uh, getting this uh, through the Senate and getting it signed into law as soon as we can will generate more jobs in the United States. So, so and, and, and I know we've been somewhat redundant on that, but it's important to reinforce that. On the other side, uh, you know, for those folks that may be more mature, uh, your, your other organization helps people raise money as well or do acquisitions. A little bit more about that, if you will. Well, we've been advising funds and fund of funds and private companies for the last six years okay. on strategy and marketing to family offices. Mm -hmm. Do not raise money okay. through the family office institutional strategy and investor relationship. Got it. Okay. Second, okay. So a typical uh, uh, industry, David, or type of firm that you would work with? And then we'll get back to crowdfunding okay. here a little bit. And when it comes to... Uh, this is the private company marketplace of private companies. Typically, we like to work with high-growth technology companies. Mm -hmm. And the other part of it is we like to work with funds and fund of funds who are marketing to the institutions globally. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, good. 
because I know that was some of the questions that we received as well. That's the reason I'm taking some time to drill down on that, my favorite word, so our audience really understands. Uh, they were a little confused. Is it an education business? What well, I know he does both, and so so I want to make sure that everybody was clear on that. Um, your crystal ball, and then we're going to get in a break, and then we come back uh, after the break, and we're going to drill down on what I love, what you call five pillars to crowdfunding. But you see this thing getting through Senate this year, this bill, uh, in some form? Yes. Okay. It's going to have to go through. It's going to pass through because uh, I think it's going to pass within the next three months. There are a couple other bills in the Senate. Uh, the ones behind uh, McHenry's bill will argue the other bill is just to quietly drown out any possibility of it being a success because there's such small amounts of money you're allowed to invest. And you got to remember, Obama backed up Patrick McHenry's bill mm -hmm. Senate. So mm -hmm. everybody out there listening, if you have a political relationship with anybody, <coughs> send us an email. Send an email to david at the Soho Law mm -hmm. com. But also, I want to explain, you know, about, you know, crowdfunding and, you know, how to look at it. Um, this also applies to, you know, the bakery around the corner, the car wash buying and flipping or developing an apartment. Anything like that is a business, and this applies as well. So I want people to keep that in mind. Okay. Well, we're going to go ahead and get our get a break in, uh, David, and we come back after the break. It's, uh, it's, it's take a look at that more. You're watching KYMB TV, Comcast Channel 19. We'll be right back after this break. Are you looking for a clarity of purpose? Are you a recent college graduate, unemployed, an entrepreneur, or considering a career change? A business owner or employee struggling with performance issues? Classes are forming now for the worldwide phenomenon, What's My Purpose Life Mastery Course 2.0. What's My Purpose Life Mastery Course 2.0 can help you define your goals and vision. Start living your life on purpose. Living on purpose is about joy. Living on purpose is about intention. Living on purpose is about personal transformation and continued growth. What's My Purpose Life Mastery Course 2.0 is a 12-week challenging course that helps you address finances, relationships, spiritual growth, physical and mental health. You will reclaim your personal power and get your life on track to attain true success. Classes are forming now for What's My Purpose Life Mastery Course 2.0. Learn more and register at What's My Purpose. That is whatsmypurpose.com, whatsmypurpose.com. We're back with David Drake. Um, we're discussing uh, crowdfunding. And in this segment, uh, David, it's, it's uh, go through your five pillars, and then we will drill down in another segment of those steps that they can take in order to pick it up on what you're saying, the bakery and everybody that can start using this. So I, I, I love these. You said Cloud labor. What do you mean by that? This is the five pillars of crowdfunding. So what did you mean by that? Cloud labor. What is it? Right now, today, we've been able to identify close to 2,000 different cloud-based businesses that have been broken down to five different categories. Mm -hmm. Now, on the crowdfunding, as we use freely in left and right, Crowd and cloud, it's the same, uh, similar thing. The crowd is coming to you, helping you out. Right. Cloud is going out to the Internet and allowing different parts of the Internet, of the cloud, harness uh, the data and the content so it's not over-leveraging one single computer per se. So you're using maybe 10% of labor in India and maybe 10% of labor somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Or granularly, you're applying it to servers and computers. So, as you said, you know, we're looking at it in crowdsourcing. Right. There's five major industries and there's 2,000 companies globally, with most of them actually being revenue generating and profitable today. It's just that you and I haven't really gotten exposed much to them. You know, there are billion dollar companies who use crowd, cloud labor to do tasks, like secretarial tasks, Indians transcribing you know, legal documents in India or, you know, doctor's documents, medical documents in India being transcribed. And they're used in the cloud or the Internet to proliferate this and spread the work out 
two different computers all over the world to reduce their cost. Mm-hmm. And remember, in India, the cost is probably down to two to cost four dollars an hour mm-hmm. labor, maybe eight dollars an hour. So who wouldn't want to use a computer to transcribe images and then let them type it up because their English is their first language? Okay. Now, Okay, so this first fellow, the basically it's the internet and computer, what you're talking about in the cloud labor concept, utilizing right. technology, right? Okay. I'll give an example. You know, uh, when I needed to hire a temporary assistant while I was traveling around the world two years ago, I would go to a website called Elan. Right. You can bid on labor and on workers per project or per hour, right. they will be submit to you the you know, pricing of what they can offer and their background. That was a good example of cloud labor, where you didn't need to have somebody in an office, but somebody like a housewife back in the kitchen could do the job for you because they had an MBA or they had a graduate degree, and they wanted to feel effective and do something good during the day. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because that's where my mind went with Elance. We we use Elance as well and been very successful in doing so. But I want to be careful here, uh, David, uh, for our audience. I, I don't want to confuse them. How is this? They they're they're thinking right now. Well, okay. Well, let's just outsource it. I mean, what's you know what's what's the difference? And I know I have a lot of our uh, viewers that were really confused uh, about. Hmm, this is no different than just outsourcing. Uh, that that question makes sense. Well, I understand, but it also makes sense for housewives and people sitting at home or people looking for a job. They may have a talent that can be accessible right. through this means, and it doesn't mean that you're doing the work on the computer. Right. That means you're getting the job on the computer. It could be a job where you do make something and you ship it. Right. Okay. The way for you to find buyers of your services or product. Right. Okay. So the next one in the creativity in this uh, pillow, uh, and, and that's what you've basically been talking about. You you can get very creative uh, in how you approach uh, the need. But I'm a business. I'm listening to the show today, and I'm just going to take California just because we're, even though we're broadcasting uh, uh, over 200 countries today, uh, but, but I'm a business in California. I'm making widgets, but I need money in order to buy more material for my widgets. So how can I use crowdfunded mechanism to be able to get money and I know you have, you have hit on that, not only today, but in the last show. So a little bit more on that, please. So they understand the difference between uh, going out and I'm going to sell my bicycle, but I don't have the money to buy the parts to make the bicycle. I want to pre-sell the bicycle through crowdfunding. So what's any different about that? And say, hey, I'll make you bicycle, but give me a deposit. So... What, how, how can we clarify that? What's the difference between those terms and using what we call the crowdfunding? How, 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 how is that different? The bicycle example is just to make it simple. The okay. manufacturer of a good would do the same thing. He would go online on any of these sites and pre-sell his product and say, I want to make 10,000 of these shoe boxes, okay. 10,000 of these TVs. I want to manufacture 10,000 pies. And to do so, here's my little plan of how much money I need to get me started. And then he would use the site, which would be the social media of crowdfunding, of getting crowds to give him $50 or $10. But he'll dictate that. He'll say, look, I'll give you a pie if you give me $10 now towards the pie. You give me $100, I'll give you a pie and I'll put your name on the pie and I'll mail it to you. You give me a $1,000, I'll give you 15 pies. You're technically pre-selling the product. You're giving them the pies as a reward afterwards. Okay. It have to be pies, or it doesn't have to be the product. Okay. Okay. Dinner. Whatever they think is reasonable, they can make up themselves. Okay. Let me, let me uh, ask you this, Dave. In, in that example, I'm a small business owner, but I'm trying to find a market and I don't have the funds to 
hire somebody to do my marketing and sales, so I'm trying to find a market for my product. Where do they get the money for that, even before they have the product sold? You're going to have to use crowdfunding again and put it into your budget. I mean, look, the five pillars are the way everybody can listen to it. Right. That's cloud labor. Cloud labor. Creativity. Creativity. You got knowledge, such as, you know, distributed knowledge. Right. Innovation. Right. The last one is crowdfunding that we're using loosely left and right. Right. Okay. Because crowdfunding is technically funding capital that we would think, but there's five pillars in this scenario. And if it is that they need creativity of making marketing materials, then you can go to, like we said, Elan and bid for it. And 10 people will bid for it and tell you their experience, where they're from, their phone number, and how much they're going to charge you. That's a great way for the creativity as well as labor to come in. Creativity is they might might hire three people to do three marketing uh, forms or three marketing proposals while you use labor to do the work. But back to the funding part, you would have to put that into your budget. If you don't have the capacity, then you put it into a budget and say, I need $120,000. And I would recommend if you're already business up and running, create a private label. If you've been making uh, John's Pies, why don't you call it John Pie 2, limited edition? And then suddenly you use the same pie, but brand it differently and go on out and ask money for it. We're seeing more and more companies going out to get money for their business by using crowdfunding. And it comes back to your point of view. Everybody keeps saying it's going to bring us jobs. Right. Let me explain why it's going to bring jobs. Okay. It's bringing jobs because if you have capital to buy things, then you have to hire people to run it. Right. For instance, a very good example is I can't afford buying a truck, but we're a trucking business. If you give me money to buy a truck, I can hire five people to run the truck. That's the idea with crowdfunding. Give us small people some money to start the business, and we have to hire people to run it. And that's why we're going to bring jobs back to the U.S. Now, as I said before, you know, crowdfunding in the Senate today, it's about giving you ownership of the business and not just that free pie. Right. Right. David... Do you believe, based on all your years of experience, and, and, and you have a tremendous amount of international experience, once this bill is signed into law in the United States and people are able to sell equity in their company, do you, do you think there's going to be a lot of activity in that marketplace that you know, people are going to be comfortable using this mechanism? And, and I know I'm, I'm asking for a big crystal ball here, but it just came to me, uh, well, it, and, and, and there's no limits to the amount of money that you can raise once this is completed, right? There's no limits to it? If there, there is a limit. Okay. The bill McHenry has has a limit on one million. That's right. Stated, stated uh, reports, financial That's right. reports. Right. Two million, you state your quarterly reports. Okay. There is a limit to how much. Okay. And then after that, you have to apply for exemptions with the SEC. Okay. To raise more. Okay. Like this regulation A. Okay. So let's go back and uh, just what we talk about the pillars, cloud labor, and and I think David's given a good example of creativity, and the innovation, and the distributed knowledge. Uh, before we go to uh, next break, David, a little bit more on distributed knowledge. What do you mean by that again, please? Knowledge and information about services that people need. Okay. Such as a company called Airbnb. They focus on renting out rooms in people's houses all over the world. That is considered distributed knowledge. Okay. The knowledge of where that information is located and exists. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay, great stuff, uh, David Drake. Great, great, great stuff. We've got to get another break in, and uh, once we come back, we're going to continue to drill down a little bit more on marketing and other things that you can do in order to start using this fantastic tool immediately. 
So you're watching KYMB TV, Comcast Channel 19. We'll be right back after this message. Stay with us. Business is constantly changing. The challenges of the 21st century have never been greater. There is competition in every field, and technology is more fluid than ever. Bold, innovative thinking is needed. Organizations and individuals are looking for leadership, opportunity, and a way to grow. That way is finally here. I love teaching. I love sharing. I love sharing from the heart, connecting what I call the heart to the head. Hundreds of companies and thousands of people have been inspired by one man. Even from nothing you can accomplish, if you have the will, if you have the perseverance, if you will work hard on setting goals and achieving those goals and holding yourself accountable to each and every one of those goals. Jim White has dedicated his life to inspiring excellence in people. A plus. The man was knowledgeable. He had lived everything he talked about. He was extremely sincere. He was succinct. And he was inspirational. He's given me some thought and some ideas on how to reset my th goals and how to restructure my life. A hugely successful businessman himself, Jim decided years ago to share his knowledge. Over the past 30 years, Jim White has mentored everyone from Fortune 500 CEOs to small business owners. He has helped numerous companies and individuals achieve their financial and personal goals. His circle of success is a blueprint for excellence and achievement. I got the strong feeling that Mr. White was speaking from uh, a huge amount of experience built up over the decades, which I think adds a lot of dimension to this kind of a seminar. He wants to make you get up and do something tomorrow <laughs> about changing your life. J.L. White International is a management consulting and leadership development organization. Through workshops and one-to-one -one training, Jim and his staff have inspired audiences all over the country and have been able to achieve remarkable results by focusing on human capital and designing customized solutions to increase revenue and productivity. J.L. White International is guaranteed to inspire excellence. Isn't it time you discovered what true excellence in business is really like? Thank you, David. Uh, and we're back with David Drake. And we are uh, drilling down uh, on the crowdfunding. And uh, David, let's pick up, if we, if we may, on uh, the how. And you listed two or three different websites. So maybe you can kind of walk us through what these websites do. Uh, so I want to start crowdfunding today. So what do I do? What do I need? Well, it's very simple. You know, you would need a bank account and an email. Bank account and an email address. And then you need to log in to uh, Google and do a search called crowdfunding on it to find out which ones are available. Okay. Hundreds of them. You know, one is hundreds. Rocket Hub. Hundreds of them. There's hundreds. Oh, okay. One is called Rocket Hub. One is called Peer Founders. Another one is called Grow VC. D R O W V C. Uh huh. Um, a lot of people have heard of Kickstarter, one of the larger ones. And it's all free. You log in today and just type in your name. Even if you don't sign up all the way, why don't you just try? I challenge everybody else to try. It doesn't matter if you want to do a day spa for dogs, you want to do a coffee shop, you want to do an internet company. It does not matter, or it's actually important for you to know that any store business, any retail business that you want to do, or any home-based business you want to do, you should do crowdfunding. And I'm sure Jim and I can guide you there if you can't figure it out by yourself. Yeah. Boy, I, I, I get so excited when I hear that uh, because there's so many opportunities. And, and it goes back to your pillows, right, David? The creativity and the innovation. I mean, it's there. And uh, it, it's there. I'm so excited about that. Uh, 
I want to drill down on that further, but can you give a website for potential registration for the LA event, please? Yes, uh, that's uh, the Soho Law.com. And uh, the is T H E, Soho Law.com. We're doing that March 13th and 14th in LA. We're going to have Congressman McHenry speak, and we're going to have uh, Vice Chairman of NASDAQ, David Wheels. And that's more on the more advanced side of private companies. Uh, crowdfunding is the big event, and this time, you know, we're allowing one ticket to last for two days, as opposed to in New York, one ticket only lasts for one day. I, I, I see. Speaking. So the people that would attend, uh, what will they walk away with? Other than, I mean, more of what we're giving them on the show today, or what will they walk away with? A lot more. They're going to listen to the leading crowdfunding organizations of the world discussing challenges, okay. growing, get a current update of what's happening in the crowdfunding space, what happened in the last 90 days, what's going to happen in the next 60 days, okay. all the complications for it to become more implemented. Okay. And, you know, I'm going to emphasize that crowdfunding is already here. You can log in tomorrow and raise money for your business. That's what people don't understand. It's such a big stigma, apparently, that... It is. And why? Why is people... And this is what we're saying. And this, for our audience, as, as David said, someone, give it a try and let us know. Report back to the show. <laughs> it's Indeed. do something here. Log on and then email Jim about how you logged in and what you thought about it. Yeah. Because it's... It, it, you know what it is? It's like when the internet started. Yeah. You know, in the early '90s, everybody didn't want to even go on. Like, Absolutely. It's the same thing. People don't even go on the computer to type it up. It's a mental block. It's fear for I might be so stupid. I don't understand how to type in my name. <laughs> and I, I want everybody to email Jim and say, "Hey, I tried it. Holy smoke!" Because look, this is the other argument. This is not the solution of the world. Just because you have crowdfunding doesn't mean they're gonna, everything's going to be lolly lolly da right. That only means you're going to raise some money. It doesn't right. mean you know how to run a business. I, boy, amen. Am, yeah. And that's why Angel Networks at our conference, March 13th, are going to be talking about, yes, we should use crowdfunding. We're going to break down that wall, and we'll help you do that. But then we're going to bring our gray hair in, and we're going to teach you how to manage Good. budget. Yeah. finance, raise more money. You know, the, the, the crowdfunding will be to a certain level, but then the, at that level right. will help you to raise more money if you need it. Right. You don't. That is so significant, David. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Now, it's an ecosystem that needs to be explained. There's, crowdfunding is only one part of it. And I, I want to let people know, you know, Lending Club is a microfinance company. Right. Today, even though if you have poor credit, they give out loans up to ten thousand to thirty thousand dollars per person. You got a business? Why don't you check them out too? Why not? What do you got to lose? You the don't mi the micro loan, folks. You mean the micro loan? It's called yeah, micro loan. It's, that's also part of the crowdfunding, but on the debt side, they'll give you a personal loan to you. You can comply on that one online, but there are many other ones too doing the same thing. Okay. Uh, org is another organization who did that more for philanthropic purposes. Okay. So there are purposes of these four businesses. And it falls in the same category of crowdfunding. Right. This time you're getting a loan that you have to pay back. Right. 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 Okay. Wow. Uh, so this is good. And they'll even consider people may have marginal credit, did you say? As far as I understand, yes. Yeah. Okay. You well, know, I know a couple in London, they don't even have the credit rating systems we have in the U.S. And over there, you build your reputation by paying back smaller loans. So over time, you can build up to be getting $20,000 loans right. without any asset at security. Yeah. And, and, and I love that. And also, oh. uh -huh. uh, we're, we're getting a little delay, so my apology if I'm stepping on you, uh, David. We're getting a, just a little delay in the, so uh, I, I don't like to do that. So, not intentional. Um, I love what you said. Raise the money. Crowdfunding is just one tool. 
I've seen it for 40 years, and I know you've seen it for a lot of years as well. That doesn't mean that you know how to run an enterprise. <laughs> right? So I am glad to hear that you got people that's going to be at your conference saying, hey, folks, you have the money, but the test is how long you can stay in business and not lose this money, right? Correct. And what we're doing is we're bringing Angel Network, strong California Angel Network, who's going to say, yes, do crowdfunding, do microfinance, and then go through our accelerator program, our training on, you know, writing a business plan, writing a executive summary. Some people know it really well, but look, we look at thousands of business plans every year. I'd say even the professional MBAs from Merrill Lynch, 9 out of 10 get it horribly wrong. I agree. It's extremely challenging, you know. I have institutional clients tell me what they want to see. They want to see an executive summary, two pages, left column has a summary, the data that you need to have. First paragraph says what you want, and then page three, four, and five will just be bios. That's what they want to see, and that's what I tell people. If you have that, send it to me. If you don't have it, I don't want to see it. I tell you what, Dave, what you just said is huge, and that's worth repeating. I mean, huge, because... Two pages, two pages, and tell me what you want. And if you cannot do that in two pages, don't bother me. I mean, that's the reality, right? If you don't, you can't have that. So that's another. I'm coming. Yeah, go ahead. Venture capitalist side of point of view. The venture capitalist, I'm looking at so many deals. I wanted a succinct, simple way to understand. But you know, we're getting a little off track. Yeah, the point yeah. is that people like me. Angel Networks will be there for the purpose of saying yeah. we need more crowdfunding. Okay. And then you need us to make sure that you do well with that money and you make the company the most successful possible. Yeah. Well, we've got another, uh, another break coming up, David. And we come back, let's talk about uh, marketing and spreading the word of your company a little bit, okay? So you're watching KYMB TV, Comcast Channel 19. We'll be right back after this break. This segment is brought to you by 12 O'Clock High Leadership and Management Summit. 12 O'Clock High is one of the undisputed best movie classics of all time. It is also one of the best business learning tools available. The movie rated number one by top executives for its influence on their management styles. Now, the inspiration of the 12 O'Clock High Leadership and Management Summit an innovative one-day event and 30-day follow-up where you will quickly see what's working and not working on the front lines of your company and in your own leadership style. Learn more at 12high.com. That's 12high.com. Thank you, David. And we're back with David Drake. Uh, we've been discussing for the past three, three four segments, uh, crowdfunding, and the absolute steps that you can take. And, 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 and as David said, we're getting a little bit off topic, but I don't think that far. It's really important uh, to know that you've got to have these skills and get to training and learn, learn how to put together a business plan and executive summary if you're going to continue to be successful. Okay, David, marketing and spreading the word of your company. Okay, what, what, what advice can you give our audience? I would just ask them to do something very simple. Have their family member or themselves go on the computer, type in crowdfunding, and read some of the links. Don't do anything. Just read. Read about the name. Maybe write down the name. Mm -hmm. Stress yourself out. Tell your ch children or tell your relatives, hey, I don't know how to do this on the computer. And you do a search for crowdfunding for me? Look over the shoulder and look at it. That's the first step. Then, you know, I would welcome them to come to your site and my site and read about, you know, the soul of capital creation, the events we're doing. And that's an advanced stage of actually understanding what the politicians are doing in Congress. That's at the cutting edge, hearing it from the congressmen, what's the biggest challenge is the next 60 days. That is the newest news on what's happening in the industry. Could it be good for an entrepreneur? Absolutely. It could be great for an entrepreneur. We haven't focused on entrepreneurs to attend these events, but more so investors with the money 
and investors of crowdfunding, but also investors of, you know, family offices and institutions, to come and understand that, hey, I can make my companies that I invested in, or the ones that I shall invest in, get more liquidity. Crowdfunding, crowdsourcing is one way. There are many other ways for more advanced, larger companies to pursue. Mm -hmm. This is more of cutting edge, worldwide knowledge on what's happening in the U.S. Speaking of which, we're, I'm doing a panel in Stockholm, April 26th. Yeah, Stockholm, April the 26th. And who do you think you, your audience there? Is it the same? It's the investors or who's, who's the audience there? Interestingly enough, we're doing it in partnership with one of the founders of uh, Skype in Stockholm. And he wanted a panel on crowdfunding because he wasn't covering it at his event called Globe Forum. So we discussed and we partnered up to do a European huge, large event in August. Mm -hmm. So the live airing on TV in Stockholm will be just to introduce crowdfunding as the new thing, what's happening in the U.S. and in Europe. Mm -hmm. So talk about it as an asset class, which becomes really advanced on, you know, can funds buy into crowdfunding companies. Not the entrepreneurs, but the funds and the companies themselves. Mm -hmm. So yes, we're going international right now, and I'm excited about that. But back to your question, what can you do today? Send those emails. Talk about your relationship with senators, but also go online and do a simple search. Don't turn up anything. Just quietly type in and look at it. Mm -hmm. Jim, with questions, you know, he'll send you links where you can reach us and other people. Yeah, yeah. You need to get that stigma of fear of, I can't do it. Yes, you know, you can sell meat off in the corner and do it. It all depends on how you want to portray it to be. A product, right. and it technically, you know, crowdfunding is using your links on other websites. Even if you don't have a Facebook account or LinkedIn, you can still tell your friends by email or by telling them, "Hey, check out my page on this website where I'm trying to start my business." But the point was, you know, you have Facebook and LinkedIn. You can link those, put your business on there. People will click on there who your friends come to your site where you're raising money and then donate money with a credit card. Mm -hmm. So that's the part of social media that people think, oh, I have to have a Facebook account or LinkedIn account. Absolutely not. All you have to have is an email. But yes, just because you do this doesn't mean you're going to get the money. Right. It's not magic. You're not going to have people just give you money because you just typed it up. They're still going to give you money because they probably know you, or you have a gadget that they really want or it's a bakery in the neighborhood you're building and they want that bakery. So it becomes the argument that, you know, crowdfunding is protected against uh, outside forces that might not be, you know, might be corrupt. Because the argument is, well, people are rarely going to give you money unless they trust you or want the product really badly. And normally, you know, the bakery and the car wash or, you know, the rental bike store are going to be businesses in your neighborhood. And people coming into your restaurant or into your shop or would be coming into it would be the ones most likely investing in you. So I want people to keep that in mind. Everybody keeps talking about online technology. Just because it's online, 99% of this country is built on brick-and-mortar businesses. Yep. That's the ones I'm challenging you to sit back at home thinking you can't do anything. Guess what? You can make a design, put an envelope, and say you want to design and sell these envelopes. And if people think it's cute, they'll give you ten bucks. So you have ten thousand mm -hmm. dollars. David, you just uh, uh, prompted a a thought, and I was thinking about certain communities within the United States has been pretty devastated based on the uh, the economy. Well, this would be a great opportunity to get some excitement. Uh, in those communities of using this tool and this resources uh, to start creating businesses from there and going to the local government and the city councils and getting those people involved as well, right? Got an opportunity? I think that's a great uh, way to do this. The communities, if they could educate themselves and if you know somebody that's right. part of the community, right. the municipality, they should set up an initiative of how do we train unemployed people coming through our programs or 
people looking to start business or a small business association to engage people into crowdfunding and walk them through the process. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter how much I say it's so easy. You still need somebody who will, you know, hug you and say, hey, look at me. This is how it's done. Yeah. And maybe on time we'll do that, Jim. Then yeah. we'll do it on your show. We'll sign up for some website and just show people. I, I, that's, a, that's a great idea. I think just walking them through uh, in another show and just demonstrating it. But I, I really want to challenge uh, these communities that are suffering to take a look at this, uh, this, this process. Um, that's, that's a great idea. Another thing that came to mind, how about the good wills of the world? We're talking about putting people back to work and uh, you know if if they're looking into this, uh, the Red Crosses, the Goodwills, I'm just searching for those organizations that are there to support people, try to get them back on their feet. And this could also be an opportunity, right? Yes, and I think that is definitely an opportunity. But I think it's going to be private company okay. drives on using, for instance, cloud labor, using uh, you know the Internet to get work done from different areas at the same time. Right. Private companies are pushing for that are equally as strong at getting people back to work. Yeah. But you know what? It's that commercial you see on TV. Hey, uh, sign up for my uh, program and you can make this amount of money a week uh. home. I think you can do that today based on the skills or the skills you don't think you have, but it would be valuable. Look, there are. Uh, secretaries and assistants who will just be available on the phone for people traveling. If you go to sites like Elance, you can hire somebody who will be an assistant part-time from their home using their cell phone or the home phone a couple hours a day to assist you. Mm-hmm. You know what? Why not have a program with the municipalities and the communities of getting people to work? I, I, I agree. One thing came to came to mind when you were talking about that. I think it was what JetBlue was the company, or uh, if, I hope I'm not misspeaking here, but a lot of their reservation agents were from work uh, people working from home when they first started. I think it was JetBlue when they first started the airline. Uh, so uh, the concept is there. They do, and they still do. Yeah, they still do. Yeah. Okay. Hey, you can actually have people work based on success rate. Yeah. From home. Yeah. Uh, I, I tell you what, good stuff, David, uh, good stuff. We've got to get in another break, and we, we'll come back. Uh, we'll do some wrap-up and talk about, um, uh, once again, your event that's uh, upcoming in uh, Los Angeles. So you're watching KYMB TV, Comcast Channel 19. We'll be right back after this break. This segment is brought to you by Circle of Success a dynamic, year-long, intensive management and leadership development process designed to help individuals and organizations reach their goals quickly. A customized process addressing specific needs and identifying the critical opportunities particular to the individual and organization with results measured in increased revenue, increased net profits, and increased equity. The Circle of Success, inspiring excellence in people at jlwhiteinternational.com slash circles Thank you very much uh, and we're, we're, we're back with David Drake. Uh, the hour just flies. Uh, David uh, in the time we have remaining uh, which we got seven or eight minutes uh, in, in this segment uh, if you will is talk about some success stories. You, you got some that we can talk about specifically that we know uh, that's used this process since you got involved. Uh, is there anything, anything that we could share that? I mean, we know this does work, this crowdfunding. So are you seeing any success stories uh, coming as a result of your uh, educational seminars? Yes. Um, you know, I think the most outrageous and the most amazing success story was Pabst Blue Ribbon beer. Pabst Blue Ribbon. Uh, huh. Yes. <laughs> I don't drink beer, but I, yeah, Pabst Blue Ribbon. Okay. It, the company was for sale, 
and a, and a couple beer drinkers decided, hey, love to buy that through crowdfunding, and um, they get the commitment after a couple of months for a ridiculous $322 million to buy the beer company. Wow. And they get so much attention that SEC had to shut them down because they were <laughs> okay. selling ownership in apps, which they're not allowed to do. And this is what I said before. You can sell the product, but you can't sell the equity to crowdfunding today in the U.S. In Holland and England, you can. But that was outrageous that, you know, millions of people would donate money. And they promised people, look, I'll give you a share of the stock. I'll give you stock, and I'll give you a six-pack if you give me 25 bucks to so find this $300 million company. And they overreached the amount committed. Yes, we had to show, shut them down, but... That was an absolutely extreme case, and you can look it up online. You know, perhaps Blue Ribbon on crowdfunding. Absolutely amazing. What's the status of that? But not as big. Yeah, what's the status today? I mean, what are they doing today? I mean, were they able to work through this? Would SEC shut them down? And it, yes, the SEC had to shut them down and tell them that they couldn't do that. And, uh, you know, it's a very delicate you know, uh, don't play in the securities business by SEC versus, you know, you know, we want to give you ownership. So it's very strict. Right. And uh, the broker-dealers are very protective because they have to take the broker-dealer like them. It's their private club. Yeah. What I, when you asked me before what's going to happen if this becomes legal, I foresee that, you know, the professionals, the broker-dealers, are the ones who let their license last. I think they're going to come back in. I think they're going to get even more involved and make more fees helping companies out with crowdfunding versus without. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to generate business from all sides, not only creating jobs, but also getting certain industries involved that you would expect. Mm -hmm. David, in an earlier segment, you made reference to President Obama uh, supported uh, uh, Representative uh, McHenry's uh, bill, right? Did I understand that correctly? Correct. Okay. Not that long ago. Yeah. Okay. So that's uh, that's very favorable. But what I'm hearing here, and once again, this goes to the opportunity that our viewers in the United States and even around the world has, is to let their uh, view be known. But I cannot wait to see this bill come into law, to see, and, or I should say, to allow the creativity in your five pillows to go to work. Uh, I, I, I think there's a lot to be done, and, and, and I know this word's overused, the grassroots efforts, but it's what it is. So, man, we just need to keep pushing and pushing and pushing it and to get this thing signed into law. Indeed, we have to. And I, I don't want people to get you can raise money for crowdfunding today. Today. There's nothing preventing you from getting money. You just can't offer your company as ownership to somebody giving you money. We you sell your product or services. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to offer a challenge and give something away here, and I haven't even just consulted to you about it, so if I go too far, stop me. <laughs> but to a uh, couple, couple of our uh, entrepreneurs that are at home, and you want to try this, and you need some help, if you'll communicate with David and I, we'll make sure that we can help you with the leadership challenge and, and all the different things that you have. I'd, I'd really love to see a test case come out of our show today, wouldn't you? Absolutely. And for us to be able to track it. So come on. Uh, somebody somebody, take up the challenge out there and get on the line and uh, send us an email, and we'll help you get this thing started. And it also applies to services, too, right? Absolutely. Services, products, anything you want. And I'm thinking about some very creative um, editors and uh, filmmakers. And, I mean, there's that, that comes to innovation and to creativity, right? Yes. Yeah. Film and art have taken off, and it really embraced this way of raising money for both areas. It's a good way to do it. Yes, I would personally be glad to help at least 
a dozen people walk this through if they can reach, you to, reach me to Jim. <clears throat> that, that'd be great. Um, okay, um, what else uh, can we share with our good folks today, uh, David, about this? What else? Uh, because we got uh, about four minutes left on, on, on this segment. So, what else can you share that they should know? A lot of stuff, but you know, I, I know that's a big, big, big request. Have you? Uh, I think they should be reminded that even though you do get the money, uh, that's a huge success of getting maybe ten thousand, or hundred thousand, or five hundred thousand uh, dollars. And the following step would be what we're going to be covering on March thirteenth in LA when you work with the Angel Network that we're bringing. We're bringing the money to these events. We're bringing the investors and the Angel Network. Right. It's you that want to start your own business. They want to be able to take you under their wing and say, great, you know, you raise your early stage of money from crowdfunding with friends and family. is giving you $100, $200. Then you come to us, Angel, and we'll train you on how to run the business. I want people to keep in mind that, you know, this crowdfunding has, is hyped up. It's already working. You can do it today. You should do it today. Research day online. Just do a little search family mm-hmm. first to look at it read about it don't do anything just read you know just type in crowdfunding on the, on the computer or have some in the family do it for you and just read about it yeah. David I, 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 I love that and just had this huge vision for March 13th and 14th for for those folks that has an idea you need to go to David's event because you're gonna have the money there and you're going to have the angel network. You're going to have everything you need under one roof in order to kickstart you to start your business or in, in or improve or continue to add value to your business. See how excited you get me over this stuff? No, I enjoy you getting excited. This is like I love it. Awesome, that like cutting edge to let everybody at home with hardly any skills part of this business. Okay, website, one more time. How can they register for your L.A. event, please? They can go to the website, www.thesoholoft. That's T-H-E, Soho, S-O-H-O-L-O-F-C dot com. And uh, you'll be able to read about the event. And also, we're doing San Francisco probably May 3rd or the 10th. Okay. So we'll be going up to Silicon Valley in San Francisco on a separate trip. Well, when you get in Northern California, uh, maybe we can do a, a live remote uh, uh, show from, from, from that event. We can, we, can, we can talk about that. Mr. Drake, you are a pleasure, sir. I, 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 enjoy, uh, I, I enjoy you tremendously. I applaud you for what you're doing, the education. So thank you. Keep up the great work. And uh, we will talk to you, and we'll get you on the show again soon, okay? Thank you, Jim. Thank you for having me. That my, was great. My pleasure. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, go to the website, uh, jlwcos.tv, and we have links uh, to uh, David's organization and to the event funding, so we want to thank you, and until next Monday, make it a great week. You've been watching KYMB-TV, Comcast Channel 19. See you next Monday. This has been Jim White's Circle of Success Show. Please visit our website, jlwcos.tv. Join us next time as Jim White brings it all together on Jim White's Circle of Success.